Well, hello, everybody, and good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm Rita McGrath, and it is my deep pleasure to be here with Isper Ruhl, who is the CEO of Klockner, a company I just admire tremendously for their ability to see around corners and to respond to what's going on in the environment. Um, and it's just uh, such, a, such an honor to have you here. And I thought um, we would start with the digital journey because you know, your company keeps coming up in answer to so many questions I get asked. How do you combine the new and the old? How do you make the digital work with the traditional? How do you benefit from the, you know, what a large firm can bring and what a new firm can bring? And, you know, you, you've solved so many of those problems. I think the journey would be really interesting to hear about. Thanks, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, it all started more or less in 2013, 2014. So we, uh, as Klockner, we are um, a steel distribution and service center company. So in a nutshell, we're buying steel from the big steel producers and then we're selling steel either processed or non-processed to automotive companies, uh, to uh, machinery, mechanical engineering companies, fabricators, construction companies, big companies, but also small ones. No? And uh, and, and this is, uh, so it's a multi-regional business, if you like. So we have about 170 sites, mainly in Europe and in um, North America. The problem of this business is it's, first of all, a very traditional business. So uh, Klockner is more than 110 years uh, old. And uh, so very uh, uh, traditional and, 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 and not very innovative uh, business in principle. And... Uh, and also business, uh, which is because it's very much com a commodity business where margins are continuously under pressure. And so year by year, we um, uh, did what everyone is doing in our industry. We, uh, we uh, increased or improved our efficiency and uh, we were cutting costs. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, but we were not the only one. Our, our competitors did the same. So it's, uh, it, it was practically we had no, no um, uh, real uh, opportunity to differentiate against our competitors. Most of us who, doing, who are doing uh, uh, traditional or, or this commodity steel distribution then want to invest in higher value at business. But this is also a strategy which everyone has. And whenever we are uh, in a niche and when we ever think this niche could be could, could get bigger, then, uh, then prices immediately coming also in these niches um, under pressure again. And uh, so we were thinking in 2013, 2014, what, what we can do. And uh, we then uh, developed this idea of an, of an industry platform, of an open industry platform. Our thinking was at that point in time, when from a customer's point of view, when a customer would have one interface to a platform through which the customer can buy all kinds of steel and metal products. Then this is the most convenient and most efficient way to um, buy steel. But the big question was, of, of course, how to go there. And- uh, oh, wait, just, just a couple of things. Uh, when did you become CEO again? Uh, I became CEO in 2009. So yeah. during the financial uh, so, crisis. Yeah. So, I mean, you already had to shepherd the firm through Lots of transformation, even at that point. Yeah, yeah, we had we had done uh, more or less uh, every two or three years uh, 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 restructuring of the company. Mm -hmm. And in uh, two thousand nine, when I uh, was getting CEO, we lost close to fifty percent of our sales. Right? And uh, and uh, and and then we recovered to a certain extent until two thousand eleven. And then two thousand eleven uh, uh, times for steel were getting difficult again and then we had to restructure again so it was always the same right? so uh, one or two uh, there were in uh, between 2006 and 2009 we had some good steel year, uh, years when when china uh, uh, was uh, was needing a lot of steel importing a lot of steel but in principle steel is always the steel industry is always to a certain extent under 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 pressure because there are over capacities worldwide right? And so it was, it was really becoming clear that we need a different business model. And, and that, then this idea of a platform mm -hmm. came. But then the difficulty was, okay, how to get there? 
And, uh, well, and this has been tried before. I mean, in the last yeah, yeah. bubble, there was a, a bunch of different efforts to make steel trading platforms. So the yeah, idea right. was sort of, a, and then they failed. They failed miserably. Yeah, yeah, they all failed. I think U.S. U.S. Steel invested uh, mm -hmm. 500 million uh, uh, U.S. dollars to 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 develop such a platform, and um, so it was clear in our point of view that when we're doing it in a traditional way, like corporates are typically doing it. Né? So that they set up a big project team and, and uh, that they have um, uh, their uh, meetings every three months. And, 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 and that you especially also, the typically, typically, typically for corporate is that you want to cover everything. Né? So you want to make no mistakes. You want to make sure that all features which might be needed are included. And, uh, and uh, by the way, we had such a web shop. So we developed in 2012, we developed a web shop on our own and which had all these features and uh, we were never able to get more than eight customers on this, uh, on this web shop because the web shop was so complicated <laughs> for the customers. <laughs> and uh, so what we did is uh, we tried to figure out at that point in time how startups are doing it. Mm because we were thinking, look, they obviously do something different because they are able to, to develop uh, such, such kind of platforms much faster than, than we as a corporate can typically do it. And then we found out that, uh, platform, uh, that startups work in principle completely different to, uh, to a corporate. So they starting first of all, really with the customer. Uh, a corporate is not really starting with the customer. Corporate of, often thinks what the customer might need. And, 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 and then the conclusion of the, uh, uh, almost is uh, the customer needs everything. So a startup uh, uh, is doing it differently. So they tried, we learned, they tried to find out uh, what the real pain point for the customer is when the customer is ordering steel. And then uh, 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 first MVP, middle, minimum viable product, will be developed. And then uh, this product will then continuously be improved together with the customer. And uh, so that was one learning. And, and the second learning was that, that uh, uh, on assumption was that it will probably not work when we do it internally at Klockner. We had, we, had we, we, we had an innovation group here in 2000. 13 and uh, also to try to develop or do things differently and we had a couple of meetings here internally but what happened is, what happened was that we were not able to come out of this box we had you know? so whenever someone had a good idea at least two or three others were saying ah, okay, it might work but not in our industry <laughs> or worse, and, uh, we tried that before, it didn't work, or yeah. uh, that doesn't fit with our business model, or that's going to cannibalize our existing business. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, right. And uh, all this came together. And, uh, and okay, then we, uh, yeah, then we decided to start in Berlin. And uh, we, we established then in Berlin our digital hub called Klockner.i. So Berlin is... Uh, about 500 kilometers away from where we are here at, uh, at Klockner and Berlin is, yeah, so the startup center, if you like, of, of, of Germany. And, um, and, 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 and in this hub, we then started to develop our first digital tool. So what we were not doing is, uh, well, what we not did is that we try, then started to develop this platform. We first of all were thinking, okay, maybe it's a good way, like startups are doing it, to find really out what the customer needs, also to have some quick wins, also to to make our people uh, engaged in this in in, 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 in digitalization and uh, and uh, so. But then we learned. So we we in the beginning, Klockner I was very independent because we were thinking, okay, it makes a lot of sense to have this hub, but this hub has to be independent and not be impacted by the corporate. Now, that might have been right in the beginning, but when we then developed the first tools, um, okay, we had this not invented here problem. Now, so we went with the tools from Berlin to the corporate and on the corporate side, no one was really interested in using uh, these uh, 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 tools. 
So the the conclusion was, by the way, that we that at that point in time that we need much more of this cultural change, as we thought in the beginning. Uh, in the in the beginning, we thought it's it's more uh, the technology we have to develop, but then it's what was getting clear. It's more than the technology; is it's this cultural change what is uh, needed on the Klockner side, and um, uh, then uh, we. Yeah, we established certain things. I think two two measures were very important. Uh, so uh, one issue is communication. And um, especially in a very decentralized organization, it's very difficult for the CEO, for instance, for myself to communicate these changes to our people because when I'm communicating it, uh, let's say to the first and second management level, then in the end, uh, when when it when this communication reaches a branch, it's not really what I was saying in the beginning, right? because everyone is yeah not not uh, not making fake news out of it, but but uh, everyone is uh, is, is, is Interpre turning it, interpreting, uh, interpreting right? Inter yeah, I had a different interpretation, right? And uh, and then. Um, uh, uh, my my head of IT was coming to me. Was saying, "Look, we have now this new uh, Office 365 uh, suite, and uh, with this we have Yammer." And I said to him, "Yeah, what? And what is Yammer?" And uh, he said, "Look, Yammer is some kind of an internal Facebook." And uh, I was asking, "And what can we do with it?" And he was saying, "Okay, we can uh, open it." Huh? And I said to him, "Yeah, open it." Huh? And uh, and and then when I when I try to learn what Yemma really is, um, I immediate my conclusion was immediately that this is really what you need. This is this is in this Yemma is a, a hierarchy-free communication where everyone has the same rights. And with this, I then started my communication through Yemma, and uh, I did for for a lot of podcasts and. Uh, Nearly every one or two days, I, I, uh, I, I, I posted comments on uh, Yammer and so on. So Yammer is very, uh, and other, other tools like Slack as well. But these are very, very powerful tools, especially in a decentralized organization, because with this, we were able to, uh, to have this top-down and bottom-up communication and also much more horizontal communication. Uh, so uh, without Yammer... Uh, how do you decide... I mean, you've got, like any CEO, you've got limited time and attention. How do you decide which messages to prioritize? Um, also something, by the way, I had, to, I, I had to learn. I had to learn at that point in time, then it's, then it's uh, communication in a, in a tool like Amazon, in, a, in, a, in something like, like, uh, like Facebook, is different than your typical. Uh, uh, so social media communication is different. Huh? Uh, only one example when when someone was posting we have a problem uh, here and and uh, the customer is uh, not satisfied and so on so typically reaction was how can that be uh, fix the problem or something like this when you do this in a in a social network then uh, then getting really uh, setting up the communication bottom top down bottom up will be getting difficult and uh, so you have to communicate in a way by saying okay that's interesting that this problem comes up and uh, who, who has an idea how we can fix it and and so on so this uh, this is what you have to learn as a uh, on a management level and by the way uh, of course people also in the organization had difficulties with uh, Yammer, especially the middle management they once came also to me were saying look uh, uh, we like what you're doing with Yammer, but uh, we don't know uh, how to position ourselves because now you started to communicate here with our salespeople through all uh, uh, management levels. And then I was saying to him, so to them, look, guys, for me, Yammer is all something new. Uh, I would suggest try it out, and then you will see how it works. Uh, and uh, and they weren't uh, using it at all. Huh? They weren't using it at all. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we are we are such an intensive user of Yammer, by the way, that Microsoft was sending a, a, a film team of twelve people a year ago um, for their Ignite conference to to make a video how we're using Yammer because we're using it for everything so intensive, intensively. 
So that is only one example. Um, uh, second uh, example is a digital academy, which we launched in 2015. That was also extremely important because we then, or I then started to communicate to our people, look, the world will change so much in the next couple of years and, uh, and, and digital, everything will, will, will get digital. And uh, when you have no knowledge about digitalization, uh, we might not need it you at Klöckner anymore in a couple of years from now. And, uh, but we help you and uh, uh, we have uh, this digital academy and in this academy you can take courses, our employees can talk us to uh, courses during working hours. Meanwhile, in the beginning, it was also an MVP with only a couple of uh, courses. Meanwhile, we have, uh, we have a very broad range of, of all kinds of uh, courses on digitalization, digital business, on uh, artificial intelligence, on programming languages. So whatever you want to learn, uh, you can learn. But we left it to our people to learn it. And, um, but also by also saying, okay, without this knowledge, it will might get difficult going forward, and uh, and and but in the end, what what we were able to increase the digital IQ of Klockner, and this made it much more easier to implement our digital tools, marketplaces, webshops, and so on, because our our people, I meanwhile, anyhow, but our people learned very early what digital business means. And, uh, and, 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 and therefore, I would say these two measures were extremely important to, um, to, to make this transformation uh, successful in the end. Yeah. And by, but it was also, I have to say, a try and error. Yeah. So we had no blueprint. We had no consultant. Uh, we did it uh, on our own. And uh, we... Uh, uh, always in a way that we were saying, look, let's try it out, how it works, and then we might have mod we have to modify it, or we have, uh, or when it doesn't make sense. So we also did phaser nights at some point in time, which had not a big impact, and then we stopped it. Né? So it it, uh, it it was this. Yeah, well, what I wanted to implement in the organization is um, that that we have to try out things. Né? So. And even if it not works, and even if we fail, it, it's not an issue. You know? and, uh, and, 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 uh, but honestly, it of course took some years until, until this mentality or mindset. You know? or so as, was, a leader, as a leader, I mean, one of the questions I get asked all the time is how do, we, how do we embrace the right kind of failure and how do we make people comfortable that they can try things? Because I mean, I, my parents are German. <laughs> So grew up in that culture. Being comfortable with being wrong and being comfortable with failures is not something that comes easily. <laughs> no, that's not. Uh, that's uh, really. That's uh, definitely an issue, and um, and also because uh, failures uh, are not good everywhere. No? So when when you are working for a nuclear power plant or for a aircraft company, failures might maybe not that uh, not that appreciated. No? I would say, but. No, what I, uh, I, but this is again communication. Huh? So I'm communicated again always that when we innovate, we can fail. And I also innovated, uh, I also uh, uh, intensively uh, uh, communicated when I also, for instance, made something wrong. Huh? So I, would, I was also saying, look, you guys thinking that the CEO has to be always right, but I'm making mistakes too. And 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 I was also then communicating it uh, and uh, openly, and uh, I think and with this over time people uh, were um, uh, were yeah more open. Not all of them, of course, but but our culture is more uh, open now for trying things and uh, even if we fail to the first extent. So one of the things that I thought was most interesting about your journey was you were very thoughtful about what the startup does, what the mothership does, and how yeah. to create the connective tissue between the two. Could you comment yeah. on that maybe? Yeah, yeah, that, uh, so, that, uh, so I, as mentioned in the beginning, we were getting aware after some time, we are too far away. Mm -hmm. We have no impact. Uh, uh, on the one side, uh, we had no real impact 
on the on the corporate and on the other side by the way interestingly our people in berlin which are all digital natives were also saying after some while look we need it's b2b uh, so they came mostly in berlin was a lot of b2c and they also were getting aware uh, ah, it's b2b it's more complicated we need more information about the business itself you know? and then uh, we moved then closer for some time too close then a bit far away again but now i think since two years two three or three years we have the right balance you know? so they are still independent in berlin but uh, uh, the Berlin people work close together also with the corporate and we exchange also people. So for instance, our country CEOs are for two weeks every year in Berlin uh, to learn also that they also, so uh, in the beginning, okay, our people were of course also saying, look in Berlin, uh, they're not really working. They're playing uh, um, uh, football and, and, and darts all the time and, and, and so on. And all this, but, but they learned then also that they are also hardworking. And also people from Berlin, Berlin were working for some time in the corporate. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think meanwhile, we have found a good balance. But I can tell you, it needs a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And this is often done wrong. I'm, I'm seeing this in Berlin very often, that this is done wrong. It needs a lot of attention to find here the right balance and to make sure that the digital hub has really an impact on the, on the, corporate, on the corporate side. Mm -hmm. So it's very important because otherwise uh, uh, it, it fails. And I have seen a lot of failures in Berlin. Latest was Daimler, uh, Mercedes-Benz, which closed their hub after two years because there was uh, no impact on, on, on their core business. Mm -hmm. yeah. But and, one of the uh, things that um, you and I discussed, uh, I think it was at the Drucker Forum, was yeah. um, you went to pretty significant lengths to make sure that the people in the mothership, you know, the scientists, the engineers, the people doing the, 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 the really skill, you know, those with the really deep knowledge, that they felt acknowledged, that they didn't feel like second-class citizens. I mean, and I, yeah. You talked about wearing a tie. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, so that, uh, of course. Uh, so uh, that's also what an assumption which is um, which is then approaching, uh, coming up. That people are saying, look, uh, all the new, all the great things are developed in Berlin, and 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 all the other things are, and we can doing here the legacy, uh, the legacy business. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, and and uh, uh, but this is also again communication right? and uh, and also in a way I think when when the people here on the corporate side were getting aware that that they can develop these things in Berlin only with their help right? when they're giving their input and and uh, so that over time uh, this 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 problem was gone so meanwhile we don't have here uh, an issue uh, anymore when people from Berlin are here in Duisburg and uh, vice versa. It's, it's, it's not really that they, they, I would say, they strongly feel meanwhile that it's one company, yes, but also they respect the differences mm -hmm. uh, between, between uh, uh, the hub and, and, and uh, the mothership. No? So I, I, I would say in general, this problem can be solved, but it needs a lot of attention a lot of communication and and you have to bring the people together but you also have to make sure that you keep a certain independence mm -hmm. right? so that's the balance mm -hmm. you have to find right? when you want to do this um, uh, successfully yeah. right? so um one of the things safi bakal who wrote a great book called loom shots talks about is exactly that and he said you have to love your artists and you have to love your soldiers yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. a great way of thinking about it yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah. But as right. a CEO, I mean, that, that, that's a huge, um, you know, one of the things I hear from CEOs that I talk to is, well, I, you know, that, that's too much of my time. I, I need to be paying attention to other things. But it's pretty clear you've made this a super enormous priority for years now. I mean, this isn't just a thing you did once a quarter. Oh, I'm doing it for years, uh, which was not appreciated by everyone to be open. Huh? So even my supervisor in, in, in Germany, we have this uh, two level, uh, this, we have the, the management board 
uh, who's uh, who's responsible for the business, and then we have the supervisory board who's controlling to a certain extent the management board. And uh, and uh, of course, uh, also on the supervisory board, they were not only all, uh, they were not all happy um, that I'm focusing so much on this uh, transformation. And uh, some of them, uh, and I think also our largest shareholder. Uh, always complained to a certain extent because he was thinking I have to uh, I have to uh, that I have to focus more on the current business, mm -hmm. and um, which might have been uh, uh, current, uh, uh, which might have been an, uh, an immediate effect. Huh? So digitalization and focusing on it and investing in it, in it is uh, is 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 harming uh, also quarterly numbers, no doubt. Huh? And um, and uh, uh, but but I think so as a CEO in in a world where, where we are with all these exponential changes, uh, I think really you have to focus how how will the company look like in five or ten years, and also after your term. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm leaving Klockner in May, uh, ah. and. Uh, I have uh, because I want to also be now an entrepreneur by myself, huh? <laughs> and I'm leaving. Uh, but I have a successor already uh, here, um, and uh, and uh, and and the, all the benefits of this they 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 now kicking more and more in, and we and, and and now also analysts and investors for the first time penciled in the benefits of digitalization. And uh, and but the the most of the benefits will come after my term. Mm -hmm. right? So it's not when you think only on quarterly results and um, when you I, I would say or let's say this way, um, twenty years ago or thirty years ago when I was growing up as a manager, I would say. Mm -hmm. so our role model was Jack Welch. Mm -hmm. Everyone wanted to be like Jack Welch. As tough as he, as Jack Welch and everything, but, but, um, but, uh, of course, when you when you today what and and he was very much also focused on quarterly numbers, meet your numbers. That was when you wanted to make a career, you had to a, G, a GE, you had to meet your numbers. But this is not enough anymore. No? So you, of, co of course, you have this by dextrose, You have to make sure that the current business is is is, is running. Uh, relatively well, but you also have to, as a CEO, you have to focus. You have to, uh, you have to, to uh, think about the next five or ten years, and and with all these new technologies and what and the disruption which is which is going to come, uh, and uh, and you have to embrace it also. This is also an issue. Uh, for instance, the German uh, automotive industry here we have this this classical innovators dilemma. Clay Christensen. Uh, uh, um, who sadly was uh, uh, passed away some time ago, but it's uh, the German in, uh, 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 automotive industry always focused on cars, and and were always concentrated on on current years on quarterly results, and were successful for some time. But they missed they missed uh, electrification, they missed autonomous cars, they missed shared cars, they missed connected cars. So they missed all these new technologies because they were focused only on the current business. And, uh, and, and, and this is something we wanted, wanted to make different. Also, by, by the way, by embracing disruption. When, uh, when, so what, what I just explained was not disruptive, but this platform, this XOM platform, was what we launched in additional. That can also be to a certain extent, at least disruptive to our core business. Mm -hmm. And I may explain that a bit later on how, why we also launched, uh, when we launched this platform. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Just before we go there, a lot of interest in the chat on how do you navigate those politics? I mean, you must have had quite a lot of social capital built up and have had quite the story to, you know, because there are a lot of pressures to say, where's the quarterly number and why don't the analysts like what you're doing? And, you know, I mean, how do you, do you have any guidance for people that are facing similar challenges? Um, I think, <clears throat> yeah, you also, by the way, uh, you also have to adapt and change yourself also to a certain extent. So my management style is probably also different than 10 years ago when I was maybe, maybe still more Jack Welch <laughs> oriented. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, 
And, and, and then at some point in time, when you are really convinced, and I was, I was totally convinced that this is the right way, uh, then uh, I think you have to really to go this way, whatever happens. You know? mm -hmm. So I decided for myself, either I'm going this way or I may have to leave the company. And ah. I was communicating this, by the way, also to my head of the supervisory board. Yeah, I have a very good relationship with him. I was saying to him, look, uh, when you want to keep me, you can keep me only with this transformation. Yeah? You cannot keep me for the doing it traditionally like we have to done it 10 years ago. But, but you have to risk uh, also your, uh, your career might be at risk. Mm -hmm. Also on the investor side. And, uh, and, and, but here also again, communication. Yeah? So we did, uh, we communicated also a lot in the, in, in to the capital markets, not with the success that this had any impact this uh, just changing on the share price in the past. Uh, but in the end, also analysts and investors were saying that might be something. Mm -hmm. He might be right. We cannot pencil it in. We cannot judge it. Uh, uh, but it could be something. Mm -hmm. I think this is at least what you can. You cannot. Uh, uh, you may. I was not able to convince, for instance, three years ago, the people that this is the right way. But I was able to convince them that it could be the okay. right way. Okay. And meanwhile, this has changed. As I saw, I, I would say, meanwhile, no one would, would question it anymore. But mm -hmm. it, okay, it's six years. Uh, the journey <laughs> took six years. You know, so it's <laughs> and it's not over yet. Right. So talk a little bit about, um, I mean, one of the things I loved about the story is, is how each wave of this, you had to learn something new and, and, and in a lot of it didn't go the way that you were expecting, but you had in the back of your mind, uh, this notion of platforms and yeah. a Klockner platform, but more ambitiously, you know, a platform for the steel business, which would usher in a whole new set of business models. Yeah. So that, <clears throat> yeah, in the beginning, by the way, our, our plan was, if you like, to open our proprietary Klockner marketplace uh, for competitors mm -hmm. at some point in time. So we had already, we had already third parties on this uh, marketplace, and uh, but 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 only with um, uh, with uh, uh, complementary products and not uh, with competitive products. And uh, but this was not this. Uh, for two reasons, this didn't work. One reason was that for our people, so they, I think I was able to convince to the, them that we have to do this digitalization and, and that this helps also our business and so on. But convincing the people that the fiercest competitor is now a customer, uh, if you like, on the platform or is selling uh, its products to the same platform is difficult. They would, I would say, they, 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 they may have accepted it, but they wouldn't really embrace it or understand it. Second was, by the way, the cartel authorities. Mm -hmm. You cannot have uh, all this customer data and, and, and prices from, from uh, competitor data uh, and, and prices from competitors on, on your own platform. Mm -hmm. So we went to the cartel authorities, we got the approval, but we had to put a Chinese wall between Klockner and XOM, the platform. So what we then did, we launched this new, plat uh, this new platform business out of Klockner.i, out of our hub in Berlin. We established a new company with a, uh, also uh, with a different address, so they are not in the same building, with a different management. And, 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 and uh, we then started uh, to develop this platform. Meanwhile, we have 70 people on the, on the platform side. And, um, and, 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 and they developed the platform. The problem with the platform, by the way, was we were in the beginning, we were thinking it's, it's an Amazon type platform. And so uh, that you buy steel like you buy every, all the stuff from Amazon. But this is only, this works only for a certain share of our business, only for the spot business. Mm -hmm. But all this, uh, all it, but typically in B2B is more this, that you request a proposal and that for, from several companies and that you then decide from where you buy and you buy not immediately on the platform. And, uh, and, and this is, by the way, why we're all, 
other so far also competitors from all failed with the platform because it was only a transactional uh, um, uh, platform. And so you have to, uh, uh, you have to cover, if you like, the whole process. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and so we had to pivot also the platform uh, in between. And, uh, but meanwhile, uh, so meanwhile, we, we, we are able to onboard customers on the platform without any need that they have to change anything. So they can, uh, they can, they send an, a request, not anymore to a couple of suppliers. They send it to the platform. The platform then digitalizing uh, the, the uh, PDF and makes the interpretation of the PDF, which is not easy because it's an unstructured document. Uh, then, um, then we send a link to potential suppliers. Suppliers can make an offer, but they have to do it on the platform. Mm -hmm. and, and with this, by the way, we solve the hen and egg problem. And, and, and then the platform uh, makes a calculation and makes a proposal to the customer uh, uh, for, an, uh, for an offer. Uh, and, and then the customer can decide. And so we, we cover this whole process. And, uh, and this is very successful. Hmm. And, uh, and, and, but it also means, by the way, when, when the platform, so let's say there is a customer from Clocknock. Uh, a customer. So when the when the customer decides to to uh, uh, to use the platform, and uh, then also we as clock now we getting uh, the request, but we then have to give up an offer, and then sometimes we win and sometimes we don't win. So sometimes the business, or, or very often, more often than than not, the business goes to other to our competitors, mm -hmm. and uh, and and so the platform takes also. To a certain extent, business away from Klockner, and it, and even if Klockner is getting the business, the platform is taking a share mm -hmm. uh, uh, of the margin. Mm -hmm. And the more successful the platform, the higher the share might be. So, it's 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 also that Klockner we competing on the Klockner side with our marketplace, mm -hmm. we competing also against uh, the platform. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On the other side, we're using the platform also for purchasing platform has two sides because it's the only real uh, steel and metals uh, uh, platform uh, and independent or open platform. But we also know that we going forward have to make the platform also more independent from Klockner. So when I, by the way, when I'm leaving Klockner in May, I'm taking over as chairman the platform. Ah. <laughs> and uh, so, <laughs> so from, from the big uh, Klerk, no, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm getting transferred, let's uh, to say, to the to this uh, startup uh, company, to this platform company, and then uh, um, uh, then I want to scale this platform, and maybe in a few years from now, uh, the platform is uh, could also be bigger than uh, Klerk, now when we are successful. Mm -hmm. That's really so, exciting. What a great challenge. Now, yeah, you said earlier yeah. about um, the business model change. And I think one of the things that you said at some point was that you felt that the, the commodity nature of the business really had to change, that you needed to be able to sell more value. Um, and, and your guys do incredible things like 3D laser cutting you know, of materials. It's pretty impressive. But that that would be more of an expertise-based business than just a materials business. Yeah, I think uh, uh, so on the Klockner side, we have to do both. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, so we have to do this higher value add stuff. And, uh, and, but which is on the other side, uh, honestly, it's the first process step. Yeah? So it's, 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 it's not... It's not very highly sophisticated, but okay, it's more than only steel distribution or steel trading. But you also, and this is this what is, makes it interesting. So no one wants to uh, wants to be in the commodity business, mm -hmm. but with this platform now. Uh, so we, well, by the way, on the Klockner side, what we currently doing it to make this. Uh, so the transformation ends in a way that we also transform Klockner to a platform company with physical assets. And a platform company means, in my point of view, a, 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 a company where the core processes are mainly automated. Mm. I think this is the difference between digitalization and digital transformation. Transformation means that we are then, uh, yeah, comparable more to to uh, platform companies like like maybe also Amazon. It, uh, on the Amazon is the largest retailer in the world, but has no salespeople. Mm -hmm. Because the core process is automated. Huh? 
and the people are working to orchestrate and to design these processes, but not in, pro in the process itself. And that was our blueprint. So we now automating our core processes and the main processes is selling and buying uh, steel. And, uh, and, and we are uh, already uh, at, a, at a stage uh, where we now um, we currently reducing our la our labor force uh, very significantly, 15%, mostly because we don't need the people anymore in our core processes because we automating with artificial intelligence uh, the the core process, and 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 this means in a nutshell, there comes the facts. Maybe we digitalizing the facts. We make the interpretation of the facts. In steel, uh, we have no standards. Uh, for 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 the steel products itself, and uh, you can name steel. Uh, every customer names it differently, and, and so it's not easy to match such a such a request with your data base. Mm -hmm. And this is only works with AI. Huh? So we then make the matching, and then we make an automatic price, and we also have no price list, so it's a sense with price sensitivity. We know that people are less price sensitive when they uh, buy in the afternoon uh, differently if they buy in the morning. So this makes the machine. Wow. And then the ma machine give, makes an offer to the customer. That means when, when the whole process is automated, think about then the customer sends a fax and, and then the customer is getting nearly real time an offer. Mm. Today, it takes typically two or three days, depends on how many positions the customer is asking for. So we automating the core processes and with this, Kropner will be in the end um, a platform company with physical assets. The difficulty we uh, we currently have, of course, is that we now have to say our people look uh, in certain positions. We 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 don't need you anymore. We need no sales administration people mm -hmm. anymore going forward because the process is automated. Mm -hmm. And with this again, the commodity business can be interesting. Where no one wants to. No one wants to have it, but when you do it, do it much better than everyone else, then also this could be even attractive again. So lots of opportunities also on the Klockner side. That's fascinating. Oh, that's so interesting. So do you, do you find you're bringing in people in a different role? I mean, are there people that you're, I assume your needs for other kinds of people have increased rather than decreased? Are we reskilling? We doing we also reskilling people also with the digital academy, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't work for everyone. Right? Right. So we also had to. Uh, so at some point in time, by the way, for two uh, two or three years ago, we made made also management appraisal of the of, of our management layers to find out. So we were uh, we we uh, the people who really. Uh, so we had green, if you like, green, yellow, red. Né? So the green ones were embracing digitalization. The yellow ones were such and such. And the red ones didn't want it. And the red ones have left. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so we bought in then also other people. So it's a mix. Né? So mm -hmm. we, we need to reskill our people because we need also their skills. Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, and, 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 but we also... Uh, 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 engage no, new uh, or hire new people from outside, both. So there's a few things that just struck me as so unusual about your story for a long tenure as a CEO. Last year was very difficult. And I, I looked at the, you know, the, the stock price chart from a year ago to now, and you know, no. it Awful. must have been, it must have been a very difficult thing to live through, but, but it's back to where it was. I mean, that's, what's interesting. No. You know, the, 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 the demand, you know, dipped and now it's, 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 it's recovered. And I would imagine the digital has a big deal to do with it. You hadn't gone digital and got into those difficulties. It would yeah. be very difficult to pull out. Yeah, so especially talk a little now, bit about, sorry, go ahead. During the lockdown. Eh? So yeah. Yeah. Uh, we are also in a way digital, of course, which is also not typical in our industry. We were able to switch to home office from one day to the other, you know? all of us. Eh? And so we, we don't, we, everyone has a laptop. We don't have desktop. PCs anymore, and with this we were able to switch uh, immediately. Uh, and with this we didn't lose that much business. And so the the year also this year went better, much better than we saw. We had to give, uh, we had to publish already two profit warnings, but up and not. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> No, so that must it goes been, the other way around. Yeah. It must be a, a big vindication to all those who were doubtful 
you know, that, that this journey has kind of come. So I'd love to learn a little bit about your own personal journey, how you got to Klockner and, and then what's coming next. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm in principle really a guy who comes out of the heavy industry. Huh? I did coal in my uh, the coal industry, uh, chemical industry, um, all this heavy and old industries. And, uh, and um, but I also had always, uh, I, 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 I was uh, liking tech always. Huh? And I was always interesting also to a certain extent in tech, but I, uh, I never uh, was really uh, going out of the industry. So, because I had mostly good positions, and um, so, and uh, and uh, uh, now what comes next is uh, so. I'm uh, meanwhile, I'm, I'm of course much more digital than uh, even ten years ago. And what comes next is now. So, on the one side, I uh, I want to want to make this platform successful, uh, and uh, also by having a participation in the platform. So, I will also invest in the platform. By myself, and uh, then to to um, to scale this platform, and uh, I have a couple of other things. I've uh, um, uh, one is uh, that with two others, I'm in the uh, I'm, I'm just uh, establishing a fund of fund, and uh, so a fund of fund a fund which invests in venture capital funds. I myself have also a couple of investments in venture capital and venture capital funds, but the idea is that we set up a team which facilitates uh, the, uh, uh, that startups and, and, and out of this fund and uh, uh, the German middle stand, especially, mm -hmm. that they working together. So currently they have the problem, they speak a different language. Mm -hmm. We have to orchestrate it. This is our experience at Klockner. We're working together with startups, but we also have to learn how it works. And, uh, and, uh, and, and this is a big need in Germany because this typically... Uh, doesn't work and we have more and more B2B startups and, and uh, industry for zero startups which have great technology but our middle stand mm -hmm. is not using it because they, they, they don't know how to work they don't mm -hmm. know how to come and work together and I want to facilitate this mm -hmm. through this fund of fund. Mm -hmm. huh? So just just for our, our viewers who don't know what the Mittelstand is, it's a um, it's the medium sized enterprise. Yeah, the medium really sized the backbone company. of the of the German economy. It really is. Yeah, yeah. Germany is, is so we have uh, some larger company corporates, but especially uh, the, all this uh, this uh, yeah, mid sized, mm -hmm. uh, very successful often companies, but which might be disrupted going forward when they don't change. Uh, and, 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 and this is the, the issue they have. And therefore, we have to bring them together with startups. And um, that is one. Uh, another one is a PE fund, which I'm also currently establishing together with a couple of other people for transformation. Uh, so we want to want to take over companies like Klockner and then transform them. But in a good way. Uh, uh, you go, yeah, right. And, and, and uh, FORCE is, is an angel fund uh, also together with a couple of people. And, uh, but all in this uh, yeah, startup, uh, it, it all goes in the same direction, startups, venture capital and, and, um, and, and transformation. That's inspiring. That's really yeah, it's, uh, I wish I would be 10 years. I Sorry? wish I would be 10 years younger. <laughs> <laughs> well, you wouldn't have had the success with Klockner if you were. <laughs> You know, one of the things that I find um, kind of distressing, at least with the American version of private equity, is how they're basically extractive. You know, they're not building for the future. They're, they're just extracting yeah. resources in many cases. And they leave behind these shell companies. It's, it's pretty distressing. No, we want to build. We really want to build something. Mm -hmm. So we are so there. I'm doing this with two entrepreneurs, very successful ones. And uh, we want to we want to build something. We think that there are so many. I mean, the opportunities in the next ten years are so huge, uh, and uh, and uh, so it's. Um, uh, I'm looking very much forward to. to you sound excited. This. Yeah, I'm very excited. That's great. So, um, do you have any um, sort of advice, um, recommendations? So, say someone's you know mid career. They're, they're kind of looking where they're going to commit some years of their lives. Um, what, what sort of guidance would you offer them? Yeah, so I would, um, I would really, I would, so my advice would be really uh, that, that, that you have to, um, on the one side, you have to really see what's, what's, what might come going forward. And, and uh, so when you're seeing it earlier at, as someone else, then the opportunities are really 
really big, like we with this platform. And no one in, in 2014, no one was really interested in our, especially after all these attempts fail in, in 2000, they, they, no one was interesting, no one was seeing it. And, and it, by the way, also in the beginning, a lot of people were saying this is bullshit, that it doesn't work. We have seen it doesn't work in our company, in our industry. So we are different. <laughs> And, uh, and, and, and then you have to, yeah, yeah, you really have to burn then for, uh, for uh, something. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and I would say what I would make different. So when I was 30 to 40 in, in, the, in this age, I was too much focused in my point of view on a career. Mm -hmm. From today's point of view, I would I would do it really different. Mm -hmm. I would really focus more on what I'm doing and 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 uh, transforming things and building things and and uh, and maybe doing it in a corporate or maybe in a smaller company or doing it on on my own. But the the but but now when you today and with all these exponential changes which are going to come in the next ten years, I think the opportunities are much bigger today. So uh, they are endless. And when you look to, I mean, when you look to only uh, in Europe or Germany, when you, we, a lot of companies are successful uh, so far. But when you then look on the other side, what's happening in China and, 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 and what's also happening with all these platform companies and so on. And, um, and uh, so I think this is, uh, so I would engage myself more what I'm now doing going forward. Mm -hmm. So I'm not interested in career anymore. I'm really interesting, uh, interested to build something new. Mm. So you're working at Klockner? You're, yeah. <laughs> you're working Klockner is moving to the next phase. Yeah, yeah, and, um, and, uh, and, and um, right. So that, 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 would be the, that would be really my uh, advice, but you have to make yourself really familiar with all this, especially with AI and all this new technology. So this is something which you have to understand. When you don't understand AI, I think it's really getting difficult because we will have AI everywhere mm -hmm. going forward. There will be nothing, no, no device uh, with sensors or uh, without, without um, uh, AI. Mm -hmm. And when you're leading people, of course, it's also different than in the past. No? So that, so we, what we did for what we did here with our management team, uh, we were uh, before the we had this partial lockdown again. We were, had a management meeting uh, some time ago in Berlin, and uh, and what we did is uh, two days together with the business school. We were only focused on leadership, hmm. so we had only the topic leadership, empower people, and and hmm. and, and uh, all what is necessary in, in management skills to drive change. Hmm. And um, because this is so important, you know, when you're not able as a leader to really uh, drive change, uh, then it's getting really difficult. Well, I get asked a lot about, um, you know, what does leadership mean today? So this is a great sort of, I've, you got just a few minutes left, a great thing to end on because my position has always been that in an uncertain environment, leaders need to learn, you know, they need to guide and provide direction and, and make decisions, but it's such a challenge of getting the information and learning, you know, that-, that Yeah, you have, I think, especially now in a situation like this, and we, by the way, we did relatively well through this crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, and so it's what we did, by the way, is we, we did two weeks crisis management. And then we were saying, look, how will the world look like after the crisis? Mm -hmm. And let's also focus already what we have to do to be better off, really, when the crisis is over uh, and, uh, and to look through this crisis. Mm -hmm. To look, because to look to the light at the end of the tunnel and what this means. You know, that was that was then our focus. I think what is really important, and what I also had to learn, is to empower my people. Mm. I was not empowering my people enough in the past. I was getting that aware, by the way, when we had an, our annual shareholders meeting, and someone was sending me three cups, and I had to shoot uh, shoes which cups we, we 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 present as a giveaway to our shareholders. And then I was saying, look, there is something wrong. <laughs> and, 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 and so empowering your people and especially also here in the holding, I was saying to my second level, so you, your responsibility is not to work for me. You are a second management level. You have to lead by yourself. And I only want to be engaged when something is really not working. 
but so this empowerment i think is 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 uh, uh, without this empowerment um uh, it it will get difficult also to 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 make sure that this to technologies then are also used in the in the organization if the transformation works and so on so empowerment is, is much more important that's wonderful in, in the in the past and, uh, exactly and be so open important. and adapt yourself Uh, disrupt yourself also, also if necessary. Think about how you have to change to make sure that that you are not an old style uh, CEO and, and because they were fake. No? That or the old style, the the Jack Welch style, uh, will uh, will fail. Things are changing. The only thing what is not changing is uh, this disruption theory from Clay Christensen that remains. <laughs> <laughs> that remains the same. Well, I, he was a, a friend of mine, and he very kindly wrote the uh, foreword to my book. So yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um, I, I, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, closing thoughts on where can people learn more? What should what resources should they turn to? What resources? Um, yeah, I think this is of course an issue today. Uh, that uh, there are more resources uh, uh, than than. Uh, then, but so what I'm doing, by the way, we would be at home. Uh, when, when, uh, when, when I would be now at home, you would see uh, uh, hundreds of books. Uh, uh, and uh, so I still, uh, I still, my, my main resource, uh, but everyone is different. My main resource are still books. Others do it through webinars and so on. And, 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 and but my, my main resource um, are still books and your books and so there are so many books coming out and, and when you want to learn about artificial intelligence you can do it uh, everywhere but you also can read a book so but i think there everyone is different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well thank you ever so much this has been absolutely inspiring and i hope we keep in touch as you move on to your new adventure i'd love to be helpful definitely <laughs> Rita. Well, thank i you hope i can you. come to new york at some point in time i'd love that i would love that we'd be happy to host you at columbia or wherever yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much. have a lovely rest of the weekend bye-bye